Good evening, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jason Daly. I'm the program director here at Letourneau. For any of you that don't know, that don't know, uh, this evening is kind of our online version of a date night. So it's Connections Live. We do this once a quarter, and the idea is to give husbands and wives an opportunity to get out of the house, uh, to have a wonderful meal together, to share some time in God's Word, and to play some games and have a good time. So obviously, this evening, we you guys can't come to us. So we wanted to do something. We didn't want to cancel everything. We wanted to do something where we could come to you. So here's what we have for you guys this evening. Here in just a couple of minutes, uh, Bob Anderson is going to come. He's going to give you guys a devotion on communication and the importance thereof. And then we're going to transition into the kitchen. And Chef DeAndre is going to teach you guys how to make a wonderful meal just for you and your spouse tonight. So if you haven't, Go ahead and lock the kids in their cages in the basement. Go ahead and lock them in their bedroom, whatever you need to do to get some alone time for you guys. Uh, preheat your oven to 450. Uh, you're going to be cooking at 400, but Chef did say go ahead and do a preheat to 450. So if you guys haven't done that, please do that. And then he will give you all the other instructions here shortly. So about the time Bob gets done, I will come back over and grab the camera. We'll transition into the kitchen. And at that point, you'll need to drop back to 400, which will be your cooking temperature. But for now, Bob Anderson's going to come. We're going to spend some time in God's Word because that's really the most important part of tonight. We want to encourage you guys. I know it's hard to have a date night at home in the middle of the quarantine and you've got kids at the house. Uh, you've been stuck at home for weeks on end. Many of you have. Some of you may have been out, able to go out to go to work, but many of you have been stuck at home. So we want tonight to be special. We want you to be uplifted and encouraged. So please grab your Bibles and get ready for some time in God's Word. Thank you. Bob Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. As we're going to uh, be thinking and talking about communication, I wanted to start out with a, a passage out of the book of, of James. Um, from the New Testament. Uh, it's James chapter 3, and I want to read a few verses starting in verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. Well, there's a way to make friends and influence people, right? Um, doesn't the Bible say that all Scripture is... God breathed and useful to make me feel warm and fuzzy and always comfortable? No. <laughs> All scripture is God breathed and useful to teach and at times rebuke and correct and train. And that's what James is doing here. He's trying to correct bad speech. Um, he's trying to lead us or direct us to, towards healthy communication, God honoring communication. Um, Jason asked me to do this uh, Devo. He said, you know, it'd be short, about 10 minutes. And uh, when he asked me, I, I said, sure, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. But the first thought that came to my mind was uh, thinking back how often I have made a hash out of communication in about 30 seconds and then spent the next 10 or 15 minutes trying to fix it. Um, I'll try not to do that tonight. And I say that a little, a little tongue-in-cheek, um, but I distinctly remember uh, a Sunday school class at our church and me and Mary Ann, me and my wife were part of that. And uh, we got to the point, we got to the chapter actually on communication. I read through that chapter and I distinctly remember as I went through it thinking, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Oh, I would never do that. And then <clears throat> in the span of a 20 minute ride to church that Sunday to that class, I did basically everything I said I wouldn't do. Um, the next day, my gracious wife, she uh, left the book on the kitchen table with a note, and she said, honey, I think you need to reread this chapter. Uh, I did resist for uh, a few hours, but uh, conviction got the best of me. I reread the chapter, and the truth is I was cut to the core. Uh, I was right where Paul uh, states, and I think it's Romans 7, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Who will deliver me from this wretched sinner that I am? Um, 
So, you know, uh, you know, and from there I went and I highlighted that entire chapter. And the fact is, I mean, maybe I'm an exceptional bonehead. <laughs> At times I can be, but, um, you know, what does James say? He says, you know, one moment we can be blessing God with the same tongue, blessing God, and then in an instant turn around and curse people made in his image. This should not be so. I mean, that sounds extreme, but, you know, have you ever, have you ever gone from the peak to the pit in terms of your communication with your spouse and wondered, how did that happen? And how did that happen so quickly? Here's the answer. I'm going to, I, I just want to share something out of Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, one verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. We don't do that. We're selfish. Uh, maybe not all day, every day, but we battle that all day, every day. <laughs> I mean, we're wired that way. It's, it's in our DNA. Since the fall, it's part of our makeup. It's who we are. Can you imagine communication in our workplaces, raising our kids, in ministry, in our marriages, if we did what Paul is writing here in Philippians, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit? Our words would be a blessing, they'd be edifying, uh, encouraging, and at times rebuking and correcting in love when necessary. But because selfishness um, is a factor in our communication. We often react instead of act. Uh, we react in anger, pride. We lash out with hurtful words that can leave lasting damage. Um, God's word has much to say uh, about you know the power, the purpose, His plan for communication, um, and how it should look in the marriage, how how it should play out and look in the marriage relationship. So uh, basically, I, these are some go-to scriptures that have helped me. I guess we'll have to ask my wife how they've helped me and how much they've helped me. But uh, I just wanted to share some, some specific passages. So we'll just kind of go through these. We won't go into depth, but um, just what they, what they mean and what they've meant to me. Um, Ephesians 4.29 for me is a go-to. And it says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. But only such as, as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Um, and, you know, simply said, you know, is what I'm saying building up or is it tearing down? Um, you know, is, is my speech motivated by love and truth or am I reacting out of anger and false perceptions? And, and you know, what really matters? You know, often, you know, things heat up, you know, we, we, we get into a situation with our spouses, things heat up, and if we would just take the time to think, you know, what really matters. Is this issue, this ought, this uh, perceived offense, is it really a big deal? Is it going to matter 24 hours from now? Is it going to matter a week from now? I think just, you know, taking that time, we're really reorchestrate our minds to to guard and guide what comes out of our mouths um, and while I'm on it you know how we say things I have to be mindful of this how we say things tone tone of voice uh, body language they say 80% of communication is is nonverbal I don't I don't know if that's how accurate that is but I think it's pretty close um, so Matthew 7 is another one I try to to hide in my heart um, Matthew 7 simply says, Matthew 7 uh, verse 1, judge not that you, that you be not judged. Uh, and basically for this application in terms of communication, uh, give the benefit of the doubt. You know, don't negatively judge motives because usually we don't know the motives. You know, we pretty much just don't know. We can easily come up with self-made scenarios um, and that's usually a recipe for disaster. Um, Another one, and this is huge, is uh, James 1.9. Uh, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. 
Now, if anyone's got that down, if that comes naturally to anybody, get a hold of me because I want to talk to you. I mean, I, my natural inclination is pretty much polar opposite to that. I am slow to listen, I am quick to run my mouth, and I'm quick to get amped up. Um, and, you know, hiding God's word in our heart, you know, tends to reduce those things, tends to, and, and do, you know, promote right behavior, right speech. Um, in terms of listening, here's a hint to the guys, okay? Uh, I think we, we struggle with this, but um, we need to listen. We need to be better listeners. I mean, often our wives will come to us, you know, there's an issue, maybe there's a crisis, there's a problem, and we want to pull out our Mr. Mr. Fix-It boxes, you know, okay, I've got, you know, this five-step plan, and you've got a problem, and if we do this, this, and usually she just wants us to hear her. <laughs> she just wants us to stop and listen. Um, so improving our listening skills is paramount. Um, one more is uh, Proverbs 25. <clears throat> In Proverbs 25, uh, verses 11 and 12, it says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise repro reprover to a listening ear. So we got a word fitly spoken, with a wise reprover coming from a wise reprover to someone who's listening. Um, we often think conflict is a negative, you know, something to avoid. That's not so. Um, we all have blind spots. We all have weaknesses. We all have sin. In relationships, if, if these issues are never brought into the light, uh, they're never discussed or dealt with, and that's where the conflict is, uh, there's no resolution, no repentance, no growth. Conflict, you know, we, we, we want to step back from that. Conflict is productive. We grow through conflict if it's done right. If, our, if, if in our communication it's handled right. Um, so, you know, in, in this short devotional, I just want to close with the fact that um, talk is not cheap. You know, the world might say that. The fact is um, our words matter. Because communication, especially in the marriage relationship, it matters. Uh, it's vital. It's not optional. Good communication is typically not something many of us just fall into. It takes discipline. It, it takes effort. <clears throat> but God's made it possible. You know, he's given us truth, right? He's given us his word, the Bible, and he's given us his spirit. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, his spirit lives inside of you and enables you to apply these things. His spirit illuminates them to our hearts and our minds that we can walk in them. Um, you know, I started out earlier on in Philippians. You know, later in that book, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, and you know, the context there was, was satisfaction, contentment, even in adverse situations. But it certainly applies to com communication. I can do all things through Christ. And that's true. We can do all things through Jesus Christ. And ultimately, he gets the glory. And our relationships are edified and built up, and that's worth it. So let's let's close in a word of prayer. Father God, we just we praise you, Lord, for your word that you have given us 66 books by over 40 different authors, and it covers every aspect of this physical life here and now, Lord. And it certainly deals and covers our communication. So, Father, we want to strive to honor you in our marriages, Father, that we would too. Becoming one would be drawn closer to you and grow closer together in that, in that bond, in that institution that you started, Father. And that we would honor you in it, Father, showing a world that needs to see unconditional love between two people, just like that unconditional love you, you've lavished on us in Jesus Christ. So we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see me flip the camera here around just one second and we're going to head into the kitchen so if you guys will uh, double check your ovens if you did not preheat them to 450 you should definitely do so now if you did 400 is the temperature that you want it to be on for the actual cooking time so we're going to head back to the kitchen so bear with us one second chef deandre is ready so as soon as we get the camera set we'll move on to the next portion of this evening's entertainment so 
Hope you guys were encouraged by that wonderful word from uh, Bob Anderson. All right, guys, we're going to flip it around now. Good evening, Chef. Good evening, guys. All right, my friend, the show is yours. All right, hello, everybody. I hope that uh, everyone had like, a great day today. So here we are. Uh, let's make sure that we have all of our ingredients. Uh, but first, <clears throat> this is Connection Live. And my component is romance in the kitchen. Uh, I really do believe that the spark happens in the kitchen. So if you have your favorite romantic music, I suggest you play it in the background to you know, spice up the moment. We're cooking with Chef. I am the maestro of love this evening uh, with tonight's uh, menu. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna go over the ingredients. Remember, if you all uh, have been watching my shows, I, I, I've stressed the importance of, of having your ingredients laid out ahead of time. Uh, it helps so much with the movement in your kitchen. And, um, and then having everything, you're not stressed. So tonight, we don't want you guys to be stressed. So, uh, so here are the ingredients that we have. Uh, we have some fresh spinach. Uh, we have fresh mozzarella, uh, fresh basil, tomatoes, uh, lemon. Uh, in the recipe, you may see Montreal uh, chicken seasoning, I suggest for this dish, but any type of uh, uh, herbal seasoning that you have, Mrs. Dash, this, this is, a, is great. Um, also have an oregano, um, thyme, and dry basil, so an Italian uh, seasoning there, salt and pepper, uh, this is uh, the sun-dried tomato oil. Uh, we'll talk more about that. And here are the actual sun-dried tomatoes. I don't know if you guys can see, see the ingredients, uh, but here's the brown sugar. Uh, you wanna have your fresh herbs, which is the chives and parsley. Uh, is it possible we can get a close-up of the ingredients? Yes, uh, sir. I really wanna make sure everyone is set and ready to go for those that are cooking with me. Uh, I have um, a little milk here, balsamic vinegar. Now with the milk, it's not in the recipe, but for those of you that like your potatoes smooth, uh, you'll see me working with it this evening. But again, disclaimer, it's not in the recipe. Um, and again, I also want to stress, these recipes are, are modifiable. So don't worry, if you don't have all these ingredients, Listen, don't panic. Uh, just replace those ingredients and uh, we can move on. Okay, so the most important uh, ingredient we have, the protein, and that's the chicken breast. So I have this on the cutting board. Uh, before I start working with the ingredients, what I want you guys to do, I think they notified you to go ahead and preheat your oven, but also uh, for the potatoes, you should have a pot on the stove uh, boiling as well for your mashed potatoes, okay? All right, so we see all of our ingredients. And I'm going to uh, start with the chicken breast. And again, if you're not cooking uh, live with me right now and you join later, you can always go back and view this recipe and you can cook it later. You can you know, pull up the instructions for a later date. So no worry, okay? Okay, so I'm starting with my chicken breast. Already uh, trimmed it, but I wanted to wait and cut it in front of you guys so you can get an idea of how to start this recipe out. Um, why I chose this recipe, and to me why it's romantic, you know, when you see red colors, when you see green and red and white together, it just, it feels romantic. Well, I, you know, I'm. When I see red, you know, it just it just invokes the feeling of, of romance. Uh, we don't have to wait until Valentine to show our significant other how much we love them. So this evening, uh, with Connection Live, you know, we want to encourage you all to cook together. This is an activity that you can do maybe twice a week, uh, once a week. I mean, now our schedules are not so busy, so maybe we can do it a little more often. 
uh, and spend more time with each other uh, in the kitchen. Okay? So, I like, when I'm uh, about to stuff chicken or stuff pork, uh, this is the knife that I love to use. Just because it's, it's, it's a little flexible and it's, it's thick. And it's perfect for getting in uh, nooks and corners. Uh, this is a bony knife, okay? And this is my chicken breast. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that thin and it's not that thick, but uh, what I want to do, um, I want to just go down the middle and open it up and so we can uh, actually put the ingredients inside. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at the top of the chicken breast and come all the way down and open it up evenly. And as I open it up, I'm just going to continue sliding the knife down the middle of the crease that I made until your chicken breast resembles a butterfly. That's what we call it. This is the, the butterfly chicken breast. Okay. And that's what you would like to see. You know what? A butterfly or even a heart. You know what? It's appropriate to say it's a heart of chicken. Okay? All right. So, now that we got that open, I'm really not satisfied with uh, having enough space to put ingredients in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it up a little bit more, just so my ingredients don't fall out and my chicken stay, stay closed. So this technique I'm about to show you, just in case you don't have two picks, this will uh, ensure that your ingredients stay inside the chicken breast, okay? So you notice I have <clears throat> my chicken on a parchment paper. Uh, it's not on my cutting board. Voila, magic. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your cutting board being contaminated. So I have my stress reliever right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to gently uh, uh, pound it out just to uh, make those thick ends a little thinner. Um, so you want to use your flat part of your mallet. You don't want to use your tenderizer side. This is more like for uh, roast and beef, things that need tenderizing. We're just going to use the flat side. Okay. I suggest that the husband do that part. Uh, yeah. It's therapy, believe me. Okay, now what I've actually done, I have expanded uh, the chicken breast. I don't know if you guys can see it from there, but that's what you have so far. Hey, Chef. Chef Tom has a question. He says, So, Chef, are you making a roulade? R O U L A D E. I probably mispronounced that. Roulade. Um, I'm assuming that is roulade. Ah, probably. Roulade. Uh, is that is that right? Uh, Chef Todd, roulade is the question you're asking me. Uh, if so, uh, yes, a roulade. There you go again, uh, Chef Todd, with the big words that people don't understand. Roulade is, is a method by which you, um, how can I say this? You're putting ingredients inside of a protein and uh, you're rolling it and normally we tie it off uh, with, with string. Um, perfect example, my childhood favorite uh, desserts are Swiss rolls. And you've seen the Swiss rolls. It has the, sp the spiral uh, cream going on. So it's just a great way to present, you know, chicken, pork. Uh, I'm from the South and we we love to durkins. So, uh, you know, when you beat out all the proteins and you roll them up, that's a, that's a form of roulade. Okay? Thanks very much, Chef Todd. Who else do we have? Um, so we have quite a few people from Missouri that Jason and I know watching. Like my mom's on here. Um, our friend Debbie. Let me hear from the married couples. Married couples. 
And who's, who's actually cooking? Okay, so I'm going to proceed as we get more comments. Um, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, uh, season and oil my chicken breast. So we're going to start with, you can use uh, canola oil, uh, olive oil, uh, any general oil that you have on hand, okay? So we're going to get the inside. And we're going to get the outside. The reason why I want to add the oil first to the inside and outside, because the oil is going to help adhere my seasonings and spices. Give it a surface to stick to. You never want to try to season your proteins uh, before you uh, you give it some oil because you're going to you're going to lose your seasonings. Okay. So on the inside and the outside, salt and pepper. And again, if you're trying to maintain, uh, let's say, blood pressure. Um, the Mrs. Dash um, or any other seasoned blend that is salt free, I most definitely want to uh, suggest that to you guys. Okay, so now the chicken is nice and seasoned. Um, I've over, already added my uh, potatoes uh, for the mashed potatoes. So you probably want to go ahead and get that started now uh, as we are seasoning the chicken. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and start uh, stuffing our chicken breast. Okay. So, let's start with our tomatoes and our basil. There's no order that you guys need to do this, but again, you see why I wanted to, to, um, to beat out the chicken breast? So I have more surface area. Um, it should be larger than your hand. You know, my hand is not average, but you, know, you have the idea. So you can evenly lay everything out. Also, you see that the tomatoes are cut fairly thin. You don't want chunky tomatoes because otherwise they're going to be too large um, for the, the chicken breast to close, okay? So now, same cut on your mozzarella. So let's line it in there. I'm going to put three. And don't worry if you don't have the fresh mozzarella balls. You can go ahead and, and if you have shredded, that's fine as well. Okay? So now, we have our tomatoes. We have our... Uh, oh, one more ingredient. I'm sorry. Sun-dried tomatoes. Can't forget those. That's going to add the sweetness to this dish. And I said... Uh, before that um, we're going to talk about the the oil make sure you save the oil from your sun-dried tomatoes we're going to use that okay so 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 now we have our tomatoes our basil mozzarella and we have our sun-dried tomatoes chicken is seasoned now we are ready to close up shop So just kind of lift and stretch the chicken breast over and voila, you have a nice package right there. Okay. Go ahead and get your saute pan on the stove and let's get a medium heat on it. Chef, your, bon your sister Bonnie has joined us again from Alabaster, Alabama. Hey, bunny, bunny, bunny. Good. Um, so did we get any, any couples that are actually cooking with us? No one has said that they are. Now I okay. do believe, I know at least the Fishers I believe are cooking. Okay. Uh, and, I, and listen, if, if not, again, the video will be up and present uh, on our Facebook page and eventually to our YouTube page. So we're collecting um, a database of, of recorded shows that you guys can go back and watch at a later time. Okay. So we got our chicken breast ready to go. We got our 
potatoes cooking. And I will go ahead and give you a preview of what you need to have ahead of time for your potatoes. We need to have milk, we need to have uh, our horseradish, sour cream, our fresh herbs, which is chives and parsley, and uh, salt and pepper and Parmesan cheese. So the potatoes are going to be next. Now we're heating up our skillet for our chicken breast. Um, this is going to be a two-part cooking method. Uh, we're going to sear the chicken breast on top of the stove uh, for about, let's say, 10 minutes. And then we're going to finish it in the oven for 10 more minutes, okay? So let me take off these raw chicken gloves. And voila, fresh gloves. So I'm going to add a little uh, olive oil, just a little, because also now this is what I'm going to do with that sun-dried oil, uh, sun-dried tomato oil. I'm going to sear it with my chicken, just to infuse all that flavor and goodness from the uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Because the sun-dried tomatoes, not only are they, are they dry, which increases the sweetness of tomatoes, but there's garlic in there, there's, there's fresh herbs in there, so it's in garlic. It's very, very flavorful. So I want to impart that flavor into the chicken. Any questions so far? No questions? Good. Chef Tom says your potatoes sound awesome. Good. And your sister says that her pork chops were really good Sunday when she made them. Good, good. That's good to hear. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my chicken breast and add it to my pan. It's ready to go. So, I know your question may be, how long do we need to sear our chicken breast? Um, well, first, as you can hear, the chicken is sizzling, and you never want to add uh, your protein to a cold pan. So this is what you want to hear. If you need to reduce your heat from a medium, uh, a little lower, then, then that's fine. But right now, we want a, a nice golden color. And we're looking for five minutes on each side. And again, guys, this is, you know, we want this to be romantic and stress-free as, as much as possible. So, you know, if you want to sneak a kiss in every now and then to help, you know, the mood, I will close my eyes and look away. I'm just cooking. And you know what? As a private chef, people used to hire me all the time for these very occasions. So, who knows? You know, maybe the husband, you know, hire a private chef. Wink, 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 wink. And uh, you don't have to worry about being in the kitchen. You know, you're just enjoying each other and having a nice romantic meal at your home. So, so that's something for you guys to think about as well. Especially during these times where uh, we really can't go out to restaurants and socialize. Um, most definitely, you know, call the attorney and say, hey, is Chef available, is Chef available to come to our home? And we, why not? We can make it happen. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and go into the oven. All right, so now let's get set up for 
for our mashed potatoes. I like to put a towel down because once I put my mixing bowl, it stabilizes the bowl uh, so it doesn't go anywhere. So you need a mixing bowl and you need a masher. These guys are really handy when I'm cooking for small uh, groups or individuals. Um, so typically, these potatoes are going to be a little lumpy uh, because you know I, I want the, 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 the lumps, but any other time, if you want smooth potatoes, most definitely use your uh, KitchenAid mixer uh, for nice smooth potatoes. But today, we're gonna go with some potatoes that has, have some, te some texture, okay? So let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my potatoes. Your potatoes may not be ready, so I'm gonna just really try to pace myself. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take my potatoes out now. Okay, so what we're gonna add first? Uh, salt and pepper. I've already had my salted butter added to the bowl. Uh, horseradish. Now, if some of you are not horseradish fans, be careful. Uh, it does have a bite. So you may want to add um, a couple of teaspoons first. Let's just say um, like one teaspoon. And then at the end of the potatoes, just taste them. And if you feel like they need more horseradish, you can always add it at the end. One thing about it, once you add uh, an ingredient, uh, too much of it, you can't take it out. So let's be mindful of that. Let's grab um, a tablespoon of sour cream. Uh, let's make it two, because I like sour cream. Now again, milk is not in the recipe, but we're just going to add a little as we need because we don't want our potatoes to be, to be dry. Uh, I'm using uh, Parmesan cheese in this form, but of course you, if you have shredded parm, uh, any kind of Parmesan cheese, even if you have the, the dry parm in your cabinet, uh, that'll be fine as well. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and add my parsley and green onions. And let's go ahead and start mashing the potatoes together, like so. And, uh, you know, here's another tip. Guys, fellas, come in closer. The horseradish have some great. Okay. Just think about it. Great benefits. That's all I'm gonna say. Happy romance in the kitchen. La di da. All right. So, this is what you wanna look for. This is a nice rustic match uh, with your herbs, your salt and pepper, your horseradish and your uh, Parmesan cheese. And I add just a little milk just so it can be nice and moist, okay? All right, so we're gonna set the potatoes aside. And next, we're going to start our vegetable, which will be spinach. Now, the thing about spinach, this is about uh, six pounds of spinach. It can be very deceptive because it, it looks like a lot of spinach. This is, this is actually barely enough for two people. The reason why I say that because spinach contains a lot of, a lot of water. And for those of you that have cooked with spinach, you, you wonder why I start out with all this spinach and end up with a little spinach at the end. That's because uh, the sauteing process really evaporates uh, the water, okay? So we don't want to overcook the spinach. 
um, to the point where you just have barely enough spinach for one person. So we've already added our oil. And again, so far guys, you know, our chicken is in the oven, our mashed potatoes are done. Now we're starting on our vegetable. Um, you know, these, I try to make these recipes simple enough to where you can add to or modify uh, a recipe. Again, a recipe is not exact. So again, if you, I want to stress, if you don't have the ingredients, improvise what you have in your, in your, in your kitchen, okay? And if you have any of that sun-dried tomato oil left, hey, let's go ahead and add it uh, for the spinach. And I don't see a reason why not to add the sun-dried tomatoes to the spinach as well. Again, this is not in the recipe. You know, this is where I'm just kind of a freestyle, so to speak. And, you know, that's, that's the whole fun part about cooking with your spouse in the kitchen, you know. You guys are, are experimenting in the kitchen with each other, and it's an activity that you can appreciate uh, having fun with your, with your significant other. And then also, it strengthens communication skills. Uh, being in the kitchen, you're talking to each other, you're active with one another, it most definitely strengthens communication with each other. Okay, so we got our sun dried tomatoes in there. And that sun-dried tomato oil, it smells great. And again, I always say when you're uh, sautéing, you want to use high heat, okay? Because otherwise, if you're not sautéing, you're steaming your product. All right, let's go ahead and add our spinach. Get that goodness from the sun dried tomato, just kind of turn it around a little bit. Salt and pepper. So basically, you just want to kind of lightly wilt, wilt the spinach. You guys can take a look. This is what you want to see when your spinach is done. And now we are actually ready to start plating. Okay, we're going to start with our potatoes. right in the center of the plate. Stay right there on the plate. We're gonna add our spinach. Yeah, this smells great, guys. Okay, stay right there on the plate. I'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken. Now, we're gonna come back to the skillet that we cooked our chicken in. I actually forgot to add the balsamic vinegar, but we're going to go through that process now. Normally you would have added the balsamic to the same skillet where you sear your chicken breast. Um, so right now it's not too late because what we're doing, we're uh, deglazing the pan with the balsamic vinegar and pulling 
all of the sear goodness from the chicken from the bottom of the pan. Okay, then we're going to add our brown sugar. And we want our brown sugar to infuse with the balsamic, with the, the chicken bits from the bottom. This is going to make up the sauce. Well, the, in the glaze, rather. So you want the brown sugar to uh, melt in the balsamic. And as it melts, it's going to bubble around the edges. And once it uh, start bubbling, which it's doing now, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, can you guys take a look at this? As it bubbles, it also thickens. And this is what you're looking for. Again, I took uh, the pan that the chicken was cooking in and all of the goodness that was at the bottom Sorry for the splatter. And I added the brown sugar. So you, what you don't want to do is walk away from this. You really want to babysit this because what happens, the brown sugar, as you can see, infuses with the balsamic vinegar uh, and it, it starts to, to thicken. So flavor-wise, what you want, what you're going for, you're going for the slight tang of the balsamic and with the sweetness of your brown sugar to make up that sauce. So this is what we're looking for. And that didn't take longer than a couple seconds. You want to drizzle that right over the chicken breast. A little garnish around the plate. And then I want to finish garnishing the plate. And voila, chicken caprese over horseradish and sour cream, Parmesan cheese, mashed potatoes, and sauteed spinach, salt and pepper with a balsamic vinegar reduction. All right guys, it's good to see you once again. Another easy meal uh, that you can do right in your kitchen. But the emphasis is romance. So do it together. Or call Chef DeAndre. Take care.